Hello and welcome to our broadcast. My name is Larry Hutton. This is Limitless Life, where we take all the limits off our life when we learn that Jesus is really a living person and he rose from the dead and he sits on the right hand of the Father and he's made available a wonderful, fun, happy life, a fulfilled life, a blessed life, a life that's like living a dream. That's the kind of life the real Jesus is all about, not the religious one. People have made a religious figure out of them and a lot of uh, junk and laws and things, this, that, and the other that you have to do. But once you learn about the real Jesus, he said this. He said, listen, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. When you are yoked up to Jesus, when you are joined to Jesus, it makes life a thousand times to the nth degree easier <laughs> than you try to do everything on your own. I'll tell you what, it, it makes, the, makes life, I'm, I'm telling you, I haven't arrived, you know, when I, when I tell people that, man, I am living the dream life, I am having so much fun in life, enjoying my life, it doesn't matter what happens around me, what happens in the world, I will flat love my life because I'm living it in Jesus and He's living it in me. And I, I, when I say that, I don't want you to think I've arrived. I've gotten to the destination. No, man, I haven't arrived, but at least I've left. <laughs> I've left the destination. I'm on my way in Jesus. And I'll tell you what, the more I learn about Him, I mean, I already got healed of an incurable disease. I've already paid off my mortgage and gotten out of debt. I've already learned how to live free from stress and worry and fear and depression and bad temper and have a... Uh, have total control of my feelings 100% of the time. I've, I've learned how to do all this just living in Jesus. And that's why I spend so much time. I mean, I've been preaching since 1980, but uh, traveling since 1982, I live in hotels and restaurants anywhere from 40 to 45 weeks of the year. I'm, uh, I'm away from home and traveling and living in hotels and restaurants. And yet I love it because he is my life. <laughs> He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And there, there's no one besides Him that can give you the kind of happiness and peace and joy and fulfillment and health and prosperity and blessing that He has available to all of mankind that receive Him. So that's what we're all about here on Limitless Life. So let's get back into our series. We started a series six and a half months ago. This is our 27th week. Tomorrow we'll finish our 27th week. Today is our 134th lesson on this series that we're doing. I made this series in three parts, part A, part B, and part C. I call it the ABCs of true Christianity. Part A is what God has made you, and that simply means who are you? because of being a child of God, being in Jesus and Jesus being in you. Who are you in Christ Jesus? And then part B is what God has given you. So what do you have because you are in Christ? And then part C is what you can do uh, because of who you are and what you have. What can you do? What has uh, your new life in Christ enabled you to do and empower you to do. And you can do a lot more than you realize. Uh, so the first six weeks of this series, we covered 23 things that God has made you. Uh, the last 23 thing, uh, last 20 plus weeks now, we've been covering things part B of the series, which is what God has given you. Our foundation text is 1 John 4, 17, as He is so are we in this world. Uh, part A, I'm going to put you in remembrance. Uh, uh, 2 Peter 1, 12 and 13, uh, the Apostle Peter by the Holy Ghost. So this is God talking. He said, uh, Wherefore, brethren, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and even though you're established in the present truth. Yes, as long as I am in this body, I'm going to keep reminding you. I'm going to keep stirring you up and putting you in remembrance. So that's why we do this and we keep reiterating what we've already gone over. Now, we're not going over all the scriptures, obviously, but just keep reminding you of who you are and what you have. And when we get to part C, the third part of the series, we'll tell you what you can do. All right, so what you already are, in other words, who you already are, what God has already made you, number one, you are an eternal 
being. The Bible calls you a spirit being, an eternal being. Uh, you have been created in God's image and God's likeness. You are created in God's class of being. He's the one that created you in a God class right below Him. Number two, God has made you His very own son and His very own daughter. You are a child of the Most High God, an offspring and part of God's immediate family. Not only that, though, then number three, you are also His servant. You're His son. You're His daughter in position. You're His servant in purpose. Number four, God has made you His friend. And you want to partake of this particular uh, grace of God, God being your friend, because He sticks closer than a brother. I mean, and He's talking about a brother that's close, that you're really close with. You, you know, my brother and I in life, we're very close in life. Um, but I think of Jesus, He's even closer. So you may have a, a, a dear sister or dear brother that you're very, very, very close to. Think of Jesus, He's even closer than that. That's the, that's the best friend you have forever, praise God. Number five, God has made you an heir of His. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Number six, God has made you righteous with His righteousness. Mm -mm -mm, that's a good one right there. Number seven, God has made you a chosen one. When Jesus was on the earth, He was the only chosen one, but now you are a chosen one. He has handpicked you. He's put you on the best team, the A team, not the B squad, the A squad. And he says you're the best in your kind and the best in your class. That's what God says that you already are. Number eight, you are God's representative. You are an ambassador for Jesus. Number nine, you are an anointed one just like Jesus was an anointed one and is an anointed one. Number 10, God has made you a love being. Number 11, God has made you the redeemed. Number 12, God has made you royalty. Number 13, God has made you holy. Number 14, God has made you His purchased and protected possession. You are His prized possession. Number 15, God has made you His temple. Number 16, God has made you the light of the world. Number 17, God has made you the salt of the earth. Number 18, God has made you an overcomer. Number 19, God has made you more than a conqueror. Number 20, God has made you well and whole in your physical body. Number 21, God has made you financially independent of the world system. Number 22, God has made you a top decorated soldier in His army. Number 23, God has made you complete in Him. So that's the 23 things that we covered of part A, the first part of our series. The second part, part B of the series, is what God has given you. Number one, He's given you Jesus, meaning you, He's given you himself. Number two, God has given you the same anointing that He gave Jesus. Number three, God has given you His Zoe. His very life is inside you. Number four, God has given you a team, a permanent position on that team, and even put Himself on your team. Number five, God has given you His love. Number six, God has given you the Holy Spirit. Number seven, God has given you His weapons and His armor. Number eight, God has already given you everything you need to live a fun, happy, fulfilled life. Number nine, God has given you all of heaven's authority and all the power to back it up. Number 10, God has given you nine attributes of His character. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control are all yours fruit of the Spirit. God gave you these things. They're in you. Number 11, God has given you the name. Number 12, God has given you the Word. Number 13, God has given you the blood. Number 14, God has given you, and, and you have this by number 13, by the blood. Number 14, God has given you full access to His presence. His throne of grace. You have full access to the throne of God anytime, anywhere you're at, for anything. You have God's, you have God's ear because you can have God's, you have access to His presence anytime. Number, number 15, God has given you total freedom and total liberty for you to live your life. Number 16, God has given you angels for your entire life. They don't leave you when you grow up. He's given you angels that are assigned to you to help you. Number 17, God has given you a pathway to brighter tomorrows and a wonderful future. Number 18, God has already given you citizen, citizenship in heaven. Number 19, God has given you His righteousness. Number 20, God has given you His health for your physical body. Number 21, God has given you His financial blessings. 
and the ability to acquire them so that you can be financially free God's way and not have the headache and heartache associated with the world system of prosperity. Number 22, God has given you men and women ministers as gifts to help equip you so that you can be all that God's made you to be and have all that God's have you to have and do all that God's called you to do. He's given you men and women minister gifts. I'm one of them. God has given you men and women ministers as gifts. So I'm just a gift. I, I don't have a say-so over what the, the receiver, you're the receiver. You have a say-so over what the gift gives you. <laughs> so I'm just here to serve. I'm just here to serve the gift. God's given you men and women gifts. And we took Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 and verse 11. Verse 8, when Jesus rose from the dead, He ascended on high. The Bible said He gave gifts to men. And then verse 11 said the gifts, the five gifts that He gave, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So he gave those gifts. Now, we've already talked in detail about the pastoral office, spent several programs talking about that. We talked about apostles, spent a few programs about it. We talked about prophets, a number of programs. Uh, and then the last two programs, we've actually been talking about the gift of evangelists. Why? Because if you understand that all five of these are New Testament, Ephesians 4, New Testament, they're for you, they're given you. If Jesus gave them, He wants you to have them. And if He gave them, there has to be benefits from them. So if you learn what they are and you learn about them, you can actually receive the benefits. And then the next verse says, then you will be equipped for the work of the ministry so that the body of Christ will be all that it's called to be. Wow. It's all dependent on all of us working together. So we're talking about this gift of the evangelist. In Acts 21.8, we saw Philip was called an evangelist. This is not Philip the Apostle. This is Philip that uh, we are looking at in Acts chapter 6 before he became an evangelist. He was just a ministry of helps person. Some call him the deacon Philip. Uh, but we were discussing back in Acts 6, so let's go back there. We were discussing verse 3 where God lets us know the qualities or uh, the characteristic, characteristics that he looks for when wanting to uh, use people to work in the ministry. And it would obviously uh, apply to the fivefold gifts, but then it applies to every one of us because all of us should be in the ministry of helps. God has called every single believer to be a helps minister. You're supposed to be a helps minister. So here in Acts 6, notice verse 3, Therefore, brethren, seek out among you seven men of good reputation. Remember the Grecian widows were being neglected over the Hebrew widows. And so the 12 apostles got all the believers in Jerusalem together and said, now <clears throat> we need to find seven men uh, to help us out and, and do the work of the ministry, right? The business of the ministry. And so therefore seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom that we can appoint over this business. So there are four things here in this verse mentioned that God looks for when promoting people in His kingdom. You want promotion? Promotion comes from the Lord. So you want to be promoted. Here's four things that are mentioned that God looks for in, in uh, uh, times to promote people. We discuss what it means here to be of good reputation. That was the first thing. Then it says to be full of the Holy Spirit. We discussed that last program. And then we were discussing what it means to be full of wisdom. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit, and full of wisdom. Here, it's talking, the Greek word can be used for natural man's wisdom or God's wisdom. This is actually talking about God's wisdom here. And we briefly, I mean re very briefly at the close of the program, we briefly mentioned things that you and I can do to receive God's wisdom and to walk in God's wisdom. Uh, you can ask God for wisdom. Uh, you can fear the Lord and learn about fear because that's the beginning of wisdom. Uh, Jesus was made wisdom for us, we saw, and so if He was, then you can receive that grace. Uh, wisdom is hidden. We saw that in Colossians 2, that wisdom is hidden in Christ. And that's where you are. It's not hidden from you. Since you're in Christ, then it's hidden for you. And so you can use your faith to draw on that wisdom. Uh, we found out the Word makes wise the simple. So, so spending time in the Word will make you wise. And then we saw the scripture that says, when you walk with wise people, you'll be wise. 
In other words, you learn to draw from people. And, and when it says that, that doesn't mean physically necessarily. It can be if you have an inner circle of wise people that you walk to spend time with. But you could be walking with me because you're a partner or you're a person that watches this program all the time. And so you're, you're walking. You know, I'm walking with Brother Hutton. And so the wisdom that he walks in, I'm going to walk in. I'm not saying I'm a wise, wise, wise person. I do have a certain amount of wisdom because I, I love the Lord. He that winneth souls is wise. We're winning. So, that, I, so I know. And I study the Word, and that gives me wisdom. And I walk with wise people. That makes me wise. And I receive wisdom by faith because I'm in Jesus. So, so I know I do have a lot of wisdom. I, I, I'm, like I said, I've by no means arrived, but I've at least left. I'm on my journey, right? Uh, so if you walk with me, then you're going to receive wisdom as well. But I think that all of these ways, and I mentioned this in the very close of our last program, that all of these ways to become wise are summed up in 1 Corinthians 3.18. So let's go back there. That was the last verse we read when we closed last program. 1 Corinthians 3.18, Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age at this time, let him become a fool that he may become wise. So you think you're wise in, with the world's intellect and all the knowledge you got from college and all your education and everything. You think you're wise, but you, you need to become a fool. And, and then you can become wise. Hmm. Become a fool that you may become wise. Let me take some more scriptures here to the... In, Paul says this to Corinthians, so I'm going to use some other things he said in a couple of other verses and a couple other chapters here because this, this was not written in chapter and verse. So I'm going to use some other, all of this in context and show you what it means, become fool. How do I become a fool so that I can become wise? All right, 1 Corinthians 1.18. I'm going to read from the King James. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish... Foolishness. When it talks about them that perish, it just means people that don't receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. They don't, uh, haven't been born again. To them, talking about Jesus down on the cross is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hmm. It is the, so the opposite of foolishness would be wisdom, obviously. But God says that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Hmm. So verse 25 then, it says the foolishness of God, which we just found out the gospel is called the power of God. It's foolishness to the world. But here in verse 25, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. So now I know by preaching the gospel and learning what the gospel has to say, about his death and his burial and his resurrection and all that he's made me and given me and called me to do. I learn all that, the ABCs of salvation. I learn all that. That's wiser than any wisdom that any education, natural, intellectual wisdom man can get. 1 Corinthians 3, 19, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. Wow. It doesn't matter how educated somebody is and they could be think themselves that I'm an Einstein I'm a I'm a whatever whoever the guy is you look up to to be so smart intellectually listen the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God man <clears throat> therefore the main thing we have to do is, in order to be wise, is become a fool to the world to become wise in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 4.10, we, we must not be ashamed of being a fool for Christ. That's what 1 Corinthians 4.10 says. Not be ashamed of being a fool for Christ. Now the reason we're looking at all this about wisdom is because uh, that is what Acts 6 3 says that we need to do to be really used in God and, and used in ministry of helps, where it talks about uh, qualities and characteristics of believers that God can use. So, 
sell out for Jesus. Be be a hundred percent the gospel, the word of God. I'm going to be a word man. I don't care how much people make fun of me and put me down and ridicule me and persecute me. I'll suffer for Jesus. I'll be a fool for Christ. I'll be a fool for Jesus. Amen. And that's a quality and a characteristic you're going to need going back to Acts 6, 3. Therefore, brethren, seek out among you seven men of good report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So I said there were four things. So number one, good reputation. Number two, full of the Holy Spirit. Number three, uh, full of wisdom. But what is the fourth thing? The fourth thing uh, is revealed uh, in the last seven words of this verse. Whom we may appoint over this business. Notice the, the helpers, they're appointed by ministers. Whom we may, whom we, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, whom we may appoint over this business. The word uh, appoint here shows that there is uh, a submission to authority. If you are going to work for a pastor, a pro ministry of helps, I'm not talking about a paid position, although if you're in a paid position and helping, then that's fine too. But even an unpaid position where you decide, you know what, I, I want to help Brother Larry. I want to help my pastor. I want to help that uh, um, uh, apostle that's an, an apostle to a certain nation. I want to help them financially. I want to help them going and doing things for them, whatever. I want to help them. Uh, you're appointed. That means if you're appointed by them and, and you come to me and say, I want to help you. And I say, okay, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I'm appointing you. That means you have to be submitted to authority. And that is the fourth area here. Uh, submission to authority. Stephen and Philip and these five others that are mentioned here had to be submitted to their authority to do the work of the ministry or the business aspect of the ministry, taking care of the widows and everything. Wow. So remember Ephesians 4.12, 4.11 was apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but 4.12, uh, he gave those for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So the saints or believers are supposed to work, do the work of the ministry uh, to build up the body of Christ. And the cool thing about this is when believers help ministers, it actually increases the body of Christ. Look at this seventh verse after eight, Acts 6, where we were just looking at verse 3. It shows us what happened when the seven men helped in the ministry. Verse 7, then the word of God was spread. The number of the disciples multiplied uh, greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. So that is what Philip did before he became an evangelist. So now let's go back to Acts chapter 21, verse 8, where we saw uh, the next day when we who were Philip's companions departed and came to Caesarea, who were uh, Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven and started with him. Now, there, now this man had four daughters, four virgin daughters who prophesied. So this ninth verse also has a couple of revelations that are... Uh, worth pointing out as well. Philip had seven daughters who prophesied. Uh, this shows us that Philip and his wife obviously raised them to walk with God. Uh, they weren't married. Uh, they were virgins, it said. And that means they kept themselves pure until, uh, until the time that they were married. And it says they prophesied. So that means they were sensitive to the voice of God and they were sensitive to what God was saying. Also, these daughters... Uh, were being used to fulfill prophecy. Because if you look at um, Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29, it says, uh, It came to pass, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men dream dreams. Your old uh, men see visions. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit in these days. Also, Peter, in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost um, 
uh, was poured out, you know, 120 disciples. And then they had this experience on the streets in Acts 2.13. They were accused of being drunk when the Holy Ghost was poured out. And uh, verse, 20, or verse 14, uh, Peter stood up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said, You men of Jerusalem and you that dwell at Jerusalem, be known and hearken to my words, for these are not drunk the way you think they are uh, in the third hour of the day, but these are that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, which we just quoted. And it came to pass in the day, saith, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters. So see, Philip's daughters are now fulfilling prophecy. Uh, daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, like Philip the evangelist, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So we're out of time. We'll pick back up here next program. But I want you to just see this, that this is all fulfillment of prophecy. This is things that are still going to happen today. And when we understand these things, then we can rightly draw from these gifts, even the evangelists. We're going to talk more about the evangelist gift this next program as well. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for partnering with our ministry, helping us financially so we can reach more people. And thank you for spreading these things worldwide. We love you, call you blessed, have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Jesus paid an incredible price for us when he laid down his life, took on our sin, died on the cross, and descended into hell. But then he was raised up again in glory, so all who believe on him could become just like him, walking in love, joy, and peace, doing his mighty works, winning souls, and making disciples. The world constantly tries to limit you, but you need not go through life believing that you are what circumstances, background, or failures have forced you to be. Who does God say he has made you to be? What does God say he has given you? What does God say you are able to do? Larry Hutton goes to the Bible to reveal all that God has done so you will be able to fulfill your divine purpose and destiny on the earth. In Christ, you have all things to build you up into the believer that God designed you to be. To order, he was, I am. Go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.